Okay, so in this week's guitar lesson, we're gonna be talking about rhythm, and this is designed to give you some different ideas for improvising rhythm. A lot of times you forget that you improvise rhythm as well. Improvising is not limited to just lead playing. But as a rhythm player, you wanna do more than just strum chords. That's kinda of like the basic, that's just the first part of rhythm playing. But when you get into more advanced rhythm playing, and you're playing, especially playing along with a band, you wanna complement the band, complement the music, but not step on anybody's toes. You wanna to try to find your little groove in there. And when you do that, it's really fun. And, and I think it's more fun than playing lead in some ways, because rhythm playing is what gets people moving, what get, gets people dancing, you know, tapping their foot and all of that stuff. So we're gonna take a look at everything that I played in the intro, just the rhythm portion of that. Um, and so grab your guitar, whether you have an acoustic or electric guitar, you're gonna be able to follow along with this. It's actually fairly simple to understand. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to do all of this stuff and at least walk away with several ideas that you can apply to your rhythm playing. So if you'd like to download the tablature for this, download the MP3 jam track, which I have in multiple tempos, and as an added bonus for premium members, you can also uh, learn how to play the lead part. I tab that out as well. You can get all those extra things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP475. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about is the key that this song is in. So actually, before I even get into that, let me just play the first little section of what I played there just so we can get that sound in our ear and then we'll talk it through. Okay, so this song is in the key of A. It's a one, four, five. Your A chord is your one. Your D is your four, and your E is your five. And I'm starting in this position, so I'm thinking about the A chord using the E shape from the caged system. So I'm starting here where, uh, where I've got the bar on the fifth, uh, fifth fret. Now I'm not actually playing these chords like that, I'm just showing you that's what I'm visualizing just to sort of get our anchor here. So the first thing that I played goes like this. One and two and three. One and two and three. So it starts with that little upstroke, and then we go into the uh, th that part. So you can think of that as a call and response. So the, the call is this, and then the response is um, Okay, but you can see where those things are coming from. That's the first thing I want to just mention. It's coming from that A chord here using the E shape. Now for those of you that struggle with timing and, uh, and counting things in, you're going to love this first part because once you get it once, you, it applies throughout the whole song. So once you understand it one time, you've got it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna count in is this upstroke. And the way that I'm fretting this here is I'm playing the first two strings on the fifth fret, and I'm doing an upstroke on those two strings. Um, it's important to do the upstroke because your hand has to stay in motion as a rhythm player. And so that would naturally fall on the upstroke once we count this in, so you will see what I mean. So it comes in on the and of three. So if you're counting this, we'll count it slowly. It's one and two and three and, right there. The and of three is an upstroke. And then you're set up because your hand is in the up position and now it can come down to do the response, which is that part. So that's the, the first thing is getting that, that and. Now this part is really just that chord again, but we're thinking about the top three strings of it, that triad. So if I were to bar the first three strings on the fifth fret and only play strings two and three, doing a hammer on with my middle finger to that sixth fret third string, that's what I'm doing. I'm playing those two notes out of that A chord. I just wanted you to see where they're coming from. So it's a playing that as a downstroke, and then you do an upstroke on strings two and three. And then we're gonna do 
this, which would be our four chord. And I talk about that a lot, the one to the four chord. But we're just gonna play strings two and three of that. So that'd be strings two and three on the uh, seventh fret. That would be your D chord if you think about, about chord shapes. So it's... And then we go back to the A. And that's the first part. And once you get the timing of that, it stays the same throughout. So remember, we, we count in that first one on the and of three. It's one and two and three and four and... And then on the one is where you do... You come back and do that part. So it's one and two and three and four and one. One. So let's do that slowly together. Grab your guitar, play along with me here. So it's one and two and three and four and. Let's do it again. One and two and three and four and. And getting that timing, those little offbeats, like on the end of three, it's what really sets you up as a, as a much more sophisticated sounding rhythm player. It's a simple thing to do technically with, from your left hand and your right hand. It's just two notes and it's an upstroke. We can all do that, but it's when you do it that makes it sound uh, uh, sophisticated. <laughs> All right, so what we've looked at is basically what we play over the one chord. So all of that represents our A chord. Now, when we come to the four chord, we're gonna do the same thing. That little part stays the same. It's always on the end of three. It's always strings one and two on the fifth fret. But then for the fourth four chord, for the response, we go. Slight difference, very slight. We're still on strings two and three. But this time, instead of me playing the third interval of the chord, I'm only playing. Uh, strings two and three on the fifth fret, which looks like an A minor. I'll explain this in just a minute, but we're gonna play strings two and three And then we're gonna come to the four chord again strings two and three on the seventh fret back to the fifth fret So fifth seventh fifth we're gonna do that for the four chord for the one chord. It's for the four chord it's so some of you are going, well, wait a minute, why would you play an A minor for the four chord? Believe it or not, that does work if you're playing that A minor triad, and that's because it comes from, if we look at our D, remember the four chord is your D chord, if we look at our D9 chord, playing it like this, and this voicing of it, that's where you've got your, your D7 here, these three strings, and then you've got your pinky on the fifth fret, playing strings one and two, sounds like that, but if you look at the top three strings in that, it really is an A minor. So inside that D9 uh, chord is an A minor triad. It's kind of weird. So you can use that logic however you want to connect that in your brain, but just know that you can play that A minor triad for your four chord. So that would be your four chord for your D9. And if you go up two frets, you're playing a D6. So you can always do that six to your nine for the four chord. Ah, so a light bulb just went off for somebody out there. So you've got your one chord, then you got your four chord. You can throw in that if you want, it's a little extra there. Um, but, but anyway, that's what we're doing is we're playing this for our four chord. We go back to the one chord, and then for the five chord, which would be your E, or your E7, all I did was I went Back to what I played for the four chord. I went. Just change the timing of it. So it's five, seven, five, seven. One and two and three and four and. So it's five, seven, five, seven. It's like one and two and three and four and. That's be the timing of it. You don't have to get so in the weeds on that one. Just go back and forth. And then back to your one. Now, why would I do that for the five chord? Well, if you think about the structure of a blues, you go to the five chord, which would be your E, and then you go to the four chord, and then you go back to the one chord. So all I was doing was I was really just skipping the five chord part, going to where it goes to the four chord and back to the one chord. Now don't let that overwhelm you. Just walk away with this. You've got these two ideas that work over this entire one, four, five, and it's that for your one, it's that for your four. And then once you come to the five, you can go like that and blew the same thing that you were doing for the four and then you're back to the one. So really it's kind of like two ideas. But when you put it all together with the jam track, it really works well.
right, so now we're coming into my favorite territory and one that I talk about a lot, and that's going from our six chord to the nine chord. I, I'm always doing this because I love the sound of it. It sounds like Western swing. It sounds like, like old swing jazz to me. It's just got a real classy uh, sound, and that's that kind of sound, or these little sliding around chords things. And once you get this concept, you're gonna see that it's super easy. So we're gonna be starting off with this triad. And so that's where I've got, I'm on the ninth fret first string, 10th fret second string, 11th fret third string. It's a little stair step, so it's easy to visualize and easy to play, at least for me it is. And when I'm playing that, that would actually be an F sharp minor. It's an F sharp minor triad, you can think of it that way. And so what's cool about that is, uh, now connect this in your head here. F sharp minor is the relative minor of A. Okay, so whatever your chord is, when you want that classy six sound, you can play the relative minor of whatever chord you're on in a song, as long as you're playing the relative minor of that chord and playing the triad of that relative minor, just the three notes that make it the minor chord. So if we're playing an A chord, which we're doing at this point in the song, the song we're playing the same jam track, we're just back to the A chord portion of it. Instead of me playing an A, I'm gonna play an F sharp minor. But when you put the A in the bass, oh, now it went from sad to like kind of happy and dreamy sounding. Right, so that's what's going on there, that's our, um, F sharp minor triad, but that's it. When I put that with the A in the bass, it makes that an A6 chord. So the easier way to say this maybe is within, within an A6 chord lives an F sharp minor chord or a relative minor of that A. One other thing I just wanna mention real quick is on this chord voicing, is if you wanna connect it to something just to make it easy to find this A6, just think of your A chord up here using the D shape. If you take that, the first two strings stay the same. The, that third string switches, it goes up two frets. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in as a, another little anchor so you can connect it to something. So the timing for this goes one and two and three and four and. Now the three and four and is the same spot that we had in the first little uh, rhythm idea, but we've added another one on the two. So one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Now why, the way that I do it is I downstroke on the first one and I upstroke on the second one. So one and two and three and four and. Now watch this. I came down here, what's that? That's also an A6. I'm just playing it in a different voicing. So you should realize, oh yeah, it's probably the, the F sharp minor is probably in there, and it is. So the way I'm playing this is I've got these three fingers making up what look like the D7 chord shape. If you think of your D7 in first position, if you play that same shape here, pinky on the seventh fret, second string, and then middle finger on the sixth fret, third string, ring finger on the seventh fret, fourth string, and then you put your index finger on that fifth fret first string, you've got your A6 chord in this position. So you've got one up here, and then you've got one here. And then a little extra bonus, which we're not gonna use in this video, but you've got one here as well. Think of your A chord down in first position, where you bar on the second fret. If you go ahead and play that first string as well, that's an A6 chord as well. So those are your three positions for that. Um, but anyway, you've got, So just remember this first one comes in on the two and the end of three. Now the second one comes in on the one and the end of two. So when we're counting it out, it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now you may have to rewind this video and watch that part again, but You should be able to feel that though. Get your head out of the counting game and start to feel it. I know in the beginning, you know, you're gonna count it just to be scientific about it, but after that, you have to get more emotional and kind of feel it. And, and uh, it'll come to you. Uh, just, some of us, it comes faster than others, but it does come to you, the more of this you do. Okay, so then I go back and I repeat this. And then I come back to the A6 down here, and but I went like this. Ah, I slid from the A6, slide that down a fret, and then all the way down another fret. And that converts that A6 chord to an A9 chord. 
And that's the thing that I'm always talking about, is wh wherever you're playing your sixth chord, you can always go down two frets this direction from any of these voicings, including this one. And you can be playing the nine version of whatever chord you're on. I love that because it just gives you all these chord options that sound very jazzy, and all you're really doing is learning it in one spot. So we have... Um, now when we come to the four chord, the D chord, I just did this. I kept that A6 triad up here, but I moved my index finger down one. Hear that? And what that's doing is that's converting that A6 triad into a D7 triad, just by moving one finger. You can hear it, it goes into the, the D7 sound. So the timing on this would be the same as the for the A chord. Now remember, we're playing the D chord here, or the D7 chord. So it's on the two and the and of three. So it's one and two and three and four and. And then I came down to what? So this is playing an A, or I'm sorry, a D9, D6, back to a D9. Now we've already talked about this. In fact, we talked about the D9 here um, just a minute ago. So I'm not gonna repeat that, but basically it's the first three strings on the fifth fret then we come up two frets, that makes it an A, or I'm sorry, a D6, and then we go back to the D9. And you can connect that, so here's a nice little connection point if you wanna to get to this in the future and you don't, want to, you don't care about the theory part. There's my D chord using the A shape. One finger on the fifth fret, one finger on the seventh fret. I can look at that little area now and go, okay, cool, D6, I'm sorry, D9, D6. So I can see that now connecting it to my A chord shape from, from the cage system. So we have and then I go back to my A6 chord. And I think that's what I did. I just went played the chord and then slide into it like that, which is another nice thing about these little triads. You can slide them in. You can go from one step above, slide in, or one step below and slide in. Now for the five chord, we're gonna use the same shape we did for the, the D7. We're gonna play that up here. And that's a general rule, whatever your four chord is, just move, take that same shape. If you're playing a six chord, a nine chord, a seven chord, doesn't matter. Take the same shape and go up two frets, you're playing the five chord. So that's my five chord, which is my E7. And then I go down two frets to the D7, which is a four chord, and then watch this. Whoa, I, I went down three frets there. So I went from here, went all the way down to where my index finger is on the fifth fret, and played that, and then that leads me back to the one chord. Now what is that? That's a, se uh, a, a diminished seven chord. Now I'll put a lesson up on the screen, I don't wanna get into that um, for now, but it's, it's you can take your sharp, whatever your chord is, if you're going back to the one chord, you can take your four chord and play the sharp diminished seven chord of that chord, which is a nice transition chord to get you back to your one chord. That's what's going on there, but that's too much theory to try and cram in. So then we land on the A6 chord here. All right, so one more rhythm idea I'm gonna cram into this one. Um, we're gonna play the A6 chord here, which we've already learned, and using this shape. And then between playing the chords, I'm gonna play. A little fill lick here. So you can play your chord, it's one and two and three and four, and it's still on the two and the end of three, A6 chord. And we're gonna do a slide from the seventh fret to the ninth fret on the sixth string. And then we're gonna bar strings uh, five and four on the seventh fret. And then we're gonna play, while we hold that bar, I'm gonna come up here to the fifth string on the ninth fret, and then back to the seventh fret, and then back to the ninth fret. So basically I'm just playing strings five and four between that seventh fret and ninth fret. So it's... And that's the fill lick. And what's cool about this is you can take this same concept and you can jump it up a string for your four chord, and then you can move it up two frets this way. Like I said, whatever you do for your four chord, just go up two frets and you can do the same thing for your five chord. There's your five chord. 
There's your four chord, here's your one chord. And all of this is connected in my head to your, if starting with the one chord here, I can see where when I'm playing that A chord using the E shape, where these two fingers are on that seventh fret, strings five and four, that's the, that little bit. So hopefully that connected in your head, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. So now I can go, and, can, and play this little fill lick here. And that's where that comes from. Then I go to the four chord. Now I play the four chord like this. This is another voicing for, uh, for a D7. Pinky and ring finger on the seventh fret, strings two and four. And then I've got my index finger on the fifth fret, string three. Playing those middle strings, strings four, three, and two. And then I went. Play the same little fill lick, but up a set of strings for the four chord. And then we go back to the one. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the five chord, just to prove that. We'll take that same shape, move it up two frets. There's my E, E7. Now, uh, I could have went like that, but since we're following the format of five chord to the four chord and back to the one chord, it makes more sense timing-wise to go. Which would be the four chord lick and then we're back to the one chord. Ah, that's a lot of information, oh my gosh. I tried to make this so simple, I thought, oh, I can breeze through this in like 10 minutes, and obviously I can't. But I want you to walk away with some of these ideas. Now, remember, as a premium member, you get all the extra things, so you can practice playing the, the, with a jam track. I've got a slower version of it, so for those of you that are kind of getting into this for the first time and you can't make the chords quickly, you can play along with that. And, uh, and it's a really good practice to help you get your timing and just start to feel this thing. So I hope you'll check out Premium Membership if you haven't and, uh, and look into that. And obviously you have the tablature and everything else. Now also you have access to the lead part. I don't know if I mentioned that, I think I did, but you had, I, I did tab that out as well for Premium Members. So you get all those extra things as a Premium Member. All right, we'll see you in the next video.